Hello and good afternoon and welcome to Noonday Meditation and Contemplative Prayer Power Hour. My name is Martin Coward and we gather here every day, noon at noon, Eastern Daylight Time, Monday through Saturday, to love and support each other through this pandemic. And I have to tell you, I am so grateful for those who come and show up and share their stories, share their experiences, ask questions, come to let go of the drama in their lives. Outside and inside, it takes courage to let go and release all this stuff. So here's a safe refuge, a safe place for you to be, to let go. And I want to do something kind of interesting today. I'm going to be over the next few, next week or so, uh, I have released a course which you, it's called Practicing the Art of Being Present, Your Key to Living a Life of Love, Joy, and Prosperity. And I'm going to be giving that to anybody that comes to this group. Um, I've made it available on the Financial Mystics Sanctuary Facebook group page. Uh, it's just go in and watch the video. It's there for you. It's in the video file. Um, and it's there for you to begin to live a life of love, joy, and prosperity. And I've said before that I created this webinar. Uh, <laughs> I started this over the, in the beginning of the summer for the purpose of um, just creating a quick video to teach people how to meditate. He said, well, Martin, you know, all my coaching clients say, oh, I'm, you know, I sort of comes with the program. If you want to, if you really want to get the power, if you want to pay money for me to help you with your money problems <laughs> and teach you about prosperity, the core of what you're going to have to do is meditate and do contemplative prayer because that's how we tap into that power. And I don't know any of that. That's what I teach. So that's the way. So, People go, well, how do you do it, Martin? And they say, well, I, what do you do? So I said, well, I'm going to make you a video and show you how to do it. So let's see who's here today. Oh, hello, Darso. Nice to see you. Glad you're here. We're going to have kind of a teaching piece today. So glad you're here. Welcome. And thank you for coming. But um, the funniest thing happened when I created this webinar, as I was creating the webinar, was it turned into much more than that as I began to actually put together the content of what I would be teaching um, and creating the slides and doing all that work, I was beginning to practice what, hey, Audrey, nice to see you. Happy Friday. Today we're going to have a little teaching piece, so stay tuned. It's going to be, it's going to be the science behind uh, this idea of contemplative prayer. Why does it work? How do, what do we mean by power? And um, and this is part of the course, I, 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 the webinar that I'm that I'll be happy to share with you. I'm giving it to everybody that comes to our sanctuary. And I was just talking about how I created this course, and it was it, it evolved over the summer because the more I practiced this, what I was going to be teaching, the more I practiced it, the more it became real for me, and the more presence. And it became, and then that's where the title came from. It came out of practicing the art of being present. And one of the things that I offer my clients is, if, is if you know how to, how to let go of your worries and how to solve problems so you can live a life of love, joy, and prosperity. So I wanted to give them a step-by-step -step guide of how to do that. And the amazing thing about it is this, by the time the summer was over and the more I worked on this project, the more I lived into the project, the more the project evolved and it came actually came out of Joy the wise woman. And I stepped back one day and said, Oh my God, I'm living a life of love, joy, and prosperity. I, I'm this, I'm living this. And I'm living and, be, and the why I'm living it is because I'm living with this presence within me. I'm conscious of the presence. We all have that consciousness within us. It's just that we it, it just kind of comes willy-nilly sometimes and we don't really have any way of bringing it into into being and our egos our minds can't but these are this this is what's called a practice we have to practice it the more we practice it the more presence becomes part of our lives and that's how we live a life of love joy and prosperity 
So I'm really excited to offer you this webinar for free. It's just I'm giving it away because I think it's such an important, I want everybody to be able to live this life. So if you want a copy of it, just go to the Financial Mystic Sanctuary Facebook page. If you're not a member already, ask me, I'll look at it and let you in. And then go to the video section and look at the webinars. I got to label them better. I, I put them in yesterday and I'm sort of new at this technology, so I didn't label it very well. But I'm going to label it today so it's easier to find. But let me show you something. Today I want to talk about something called the different realms of, I want, I want to go to the science I want to move into the science behind human consciousness. And this is all based, what I'm going to show you is a slide and illustration based on the work of Dr. Hawkins. That's been beautifully illustrated in an illustration and a PowerPoint that was given to me with permission to use by the Soul Purpose Institute, who is my coach. Uh, Steve D'Annunzio and Ray Ann Lacatina have been my coaches for years. And that's where I learned this, and that's where this comes from. And so I'm, I'm, I'm excited, and with his permission, I'm able to share this with you today and use it as a teaching piece. Because I think that all of us have a part of us that says, well, how, is there any science that proves this contemplative prayer work? Well, here, I'm going to show it to you. It is. It is, it is there is empirical. Um, and, that's, and that was the work that came out of... Um, out of Harvard back in with Dr. Uh, I can't think of his name right now, Mind Body Institute of Harvard, uh, out, of, out, of, out of the hospital up there years ago, back in the 70s. Uh, there is a lot of scientific research behind mindfulness and higher levels of consciousness. And this is a way I'm going to show this to you today. So hold on and let's get started. This is known as the stairway of selves. We, we rarely see the world the way it is. We see the world through the lens of the way we are. So briefly, I want to show you the blower realm is the orange realm is the human realm. And that is the, that's the reptile brain. That's the fight, fight and flight syndrome. We feel, you know, we, we feel like the victim and we, we have fear and, Look, and look on the right side, you're going to see, let me make it a little bit bigger for you. You don't need to see me, you need to see the screen. Let me take these down too. Hold on, there's. There you go. So if you'll notice on the screen, I'm always talking about, why do we call it a power hour? Because across, these are the various realms of consciousness. There's the orange realm, which is the, the physical realm. There is the mental realm, which is the green. And then there is the blue realm, which is the spiritual. We all have these realms of consciousness within us. It is our, it is, it is, it is, it is our human. The green, any, the green and the orange are the human part of us. And the blue part is the being. As Eckhart Tolle says, Many humans, one being. It is in that blue realm, the spiritual realm, is where our being is. It's also where all of our power is. If you'll notice across the top there, their joy level. You got a joy level, a life view, a life results, and a power level. And then you've got this demarcation line. Here, here. So you've got a joy level. You've got a power level a life view, life results. And then you've got this demarcation of truth and falsehood to love and fear. This is where our ego is. This is the shadow of, the ego and the shadow are the same thing. It's the shadow of the truth. So I'm gonna walk us through the various realms of consciousness here. And we're gonna see what they are. We got, we got, the victim. We've all felt victim. We feel miserable. There's very little joy, and there's and we and it feels like poverty. We just have very very little power. And then we move up into fear. Every, we're afraid. Everything is fearful. We live in fear. The world is frightening to us, and that's how we see the world. It's very very frightening. 
and then there's also a desire, a desire to eat, a desire to, a desire to, a desire to save ourselves, a desire to protect our faith. But it's a very we have we have unfulfilled needs, and we just live in a constant state of wanting. We want something else. We want something different. So it's it's a it's a it's it's a it's a very we feel unfulfilled. We feel like we need to, get, and we look in the external world to get those needs met. And then we might experience some anger. Because we're angry that we're stuck down in here in this lower realm and we're so miserable. We want to get out of this. And we want to blame other people. And this is where we create disease for ourselves and for the world. Because we live in anger and we channel that anger at other people. But anger is a very, very, very powerful tool that we can use it and use it in a good way to move us up into a higher level of consciousness. And that's where we move up into the world of entitlement as a human being. We have a mind. We have a brain. So we actually can begin to say, I don't want to be down here in this lower level. I deserve more. But we're still not quite conscious enough of what's creating it. So we, we want to blame others. The reason why I'm so miserable is because I'm a victim and it's those people out there. It's the Republican Party or the Democratic Party or the liberals or the conservatives. It's those people that have created this horrible world for me and I don't know how to get out of here. So I feel I'm very disappointed in myself and the world. And it's a really another miserable way. And you'll see there's very little power here either. And then we have a sense of pride. Oh, I am so proud that I'm going to, and I can control all this. The ego is very proud of creating a persona, if you will, that can control and manipulate the world. If you want to look out there and see in a, in a persona of someone, just look at the president. Look at the president and how he lives. I would say he, from my observation, this is where he lives. And this is where people who follow him live. They're not even aware. I'm, I'm going to make an assumption. I don't know that for track. But I'm going to say that I don't know about people, but I would say in my observation of him, he lives pretty much in this place of fear and falsehood. He lives in his ego. He lives in this in, in, in an image of what it is to be successful, an image of what it is to be powerful, an image of what himself to be to have money and to control and dominate the world. Because that's what he behaves like a dictator. His image of a leader is a dictator. And that's how he lives. Yeah. I'm going to show you something next. And how do we get from falsehood to truth? How do we get from fear? That's why courage. Courage is the most. It, it, it takes courage to face your fears. It takes courage to, to love the parts of yourself that you don't like. It takes courage to begin to see through all the negativity in the world, particularly right now, to see the world from a, pop, a positive position. But just look. And how much more joy we feel when we have the courage to love and accept everything exactly as it is. We go from being down here at 1,000, we get 10 times the level of power. 10 times. With courage. And then we move up a little further with reason. Oh, too fast here. Doesn't want to stay on reason. I don't know why. So then we go into reason. We begin to get creative. We begin, our minds begin to think, oh, there's something bigger than what meets the eye. I don't really know quite what it is, but I have I have this ability to create. I have this ability to to, to even to, to be hopeful, even though everything around me seems to be pretty miserable. I still have this thing within me, this somethingness, this instance in me that gives me hope and the ability to create something bigger than myself. And that's where we move into the spiritual realm. And look at the amount of power and the amount of joy as we begin to love and accept ourselves exactly as it is. People talk about wanting to self-improve, and I say, no, you don't need to self-improve. You need to self-accept. 
You need to love yourself and make loving yourself the primary purpose of your life. And that's what this is. These are the steps to self-love. These are the self. So as we begin to love and accept ourselves, we get a better understanding. We see the world from a different perspective. We don't, we don't want to blame. We see, oh, this is all part of something much bigger than me. I don't really under, I don't know why Trump is the president. I don't know why the COVID-19 virus. But, but if I really begin to let go of my need to fight it and accept it and look around, I'm actually seeing that something, something positive has happened. I was speaking to someone of that I didn't even know. And he said, you know, I've gone through a spiritual, this is a, this is a stranger who's helped me with some stuff with my, with, my, with, my, with my webinars in Canada. And he said, I, we just, I don't know how we got this conversation, but he said, yeah, I've gone through a spiritual transformation in the last six months I didn't even know existed. So because he's beginning, this, this virus has caused us to stop and accept ourselves, accept the world the way it is. So look at the level of joy and look at the level of power we have when we begin to accept the world exactly as it is, without any need to change it. We can just begin to live into it and let life live through us. And then we go up into what I call spiritual truth, spiritual wisdom. This is not information. This is wisdom that we get from the universe, really. It is their spiritual laws, universal law that gives us a sense of we feel serene. We feel we feel bigger than ourselves because we are bigger than we're not. We're, not, we're no longer limited just to the energy within our body. But actually, we're part we're part of something so much larger. And we get a million, when we, when we step into the wisdom of the world, the wisdom of spiritual truth, we go from 500,000 watts to a million watts of power. That's a lot, isn't it? And look at our joy. We live in joy. And then we move over to the top to love and we get 10 million watts of power now i can't say i live here most of the time i live here some of the time that's what living a life of love joy and prosperity is about that's why i teach a course in how to have the key to living a life of love joy and prosperity this is the science behind what I teach in my 90 day course. This is it. This is the science behind it. That's why I'm teaching it to you today. And I'm giving the course to you for free on my on our site. And then this is the ultimate. This is the God self. This is the divine self we all have. And many of us, maybe we touch it at times. I, I've touched it a few times in my life. I've been graced by this a few times. And it's pretty, pretty amazing. Um, but I think that it's the divine, it's the true divine self. It's, it's, it's like the full whole hearted human, human being. It's, it's Jesus, it's Buddha. And they're probably two of the two rare human beings who've been able to sustain and teach from that place. And they're doing it today. They have, tr they this well beyond the grave. They've been physically, they physically left the planet couple thousand years ago or more but their spirit their influence is changing the world still that's how powerful it is that's a hundred million watts of power so i say do you see the power in coming together every day and practicing the art of being present do we get to be more do we get to be more compassionate? Do we get to be more loving? Do we get to be more powerful? Yeah. So this was for those of you as a teaching piece. This is for those of you who, who have some doubt, who have some um, reservations as we all do. We want, we want scientific proof that this stuff works. Well, there it is. There's your scientific proof behind meditation and how it works. 
in a way that you can understand. And if you want to be part of this movement to creating a world of love, joy, and prosperity, a new earth that's grounded in social economic principles and policies and structures and systems, for everybody, so that we can live in a world of truth and love and not in a world of fear and falsehood. We, we have created a very toxic place to live and it's too painful. And I, it is my, it is my, it's more than a belief. I am living into that truth that this is a moment in the history of human evolution. At least it is for me. And if it is for me, it's I rarely see the world the way I see the world the way it is. The way I am, and that's what I'm seeing right now. That's my experience of the world today. And I say I live a life of love, joy, and prosperity because that's been the transformational experience within me. And I think, and I see that in so many others today. And that's what we're teaching. And I think the more and more of us that begin to live into that for ourselves, then the, that collective energy is going to create that for the world. And that's why I'm here. That's why you're here. That, that would be a pretty exciting world to live in, right? One that wasn't so toxic, one that was really all above the line in truth and love. I'm not talking about some some sort of utopian ideal. I'm talking about the truth. And it seems so foreign to so many of us because we've never experienced it. But when you have experienced it, all you can do is look at the people who haven't with compassion. This morning I met with my meditation group and uh, I said, you know, I tell you what's been what I've been praying about. And that's been the president, Donald Trump. I pray for him all the time. Because I see what I see. All I can see is all I can feel is compassion for a very, very, very. Miserable, lost human being. But that lights in him somewhere. And my feeling is if I can pray for him enough that there could be a, li a little bit of light gets him, wouldn't that be cool? A little transformation in him. A Saul to Paul transformation. It only takes a second, by the way. You just have to be ready for it and open to it. I don't think that he is right now anyway. <laughs> it's not my job. So I can pray for him and I can pray for compassion. But I'm also, I wanna be, well, I wanna be really clear about something. Uh, people who live in that lower realm, and that's that's like dictators. People like that's where all of all they can be dangerous. They are dangerous. They ha he has been dangerous. Almost two hundred thousand people have died unnecessarily, many of them, because of his being stuck in that lower realm. Because he's in a position of power where he could have made a difference, and he did not. And that's becoming pretty evident. So. We got to move him out of the office. That's that we got to we got to move somebody unless he's willing to to grow into a higher level of consciousness. We need leaders in this world right now who are coming from that higher level of consciousness, who are coming from the place of love and empathy and compassion and truth, and competency. Any comments? Any questions before we meditate? Any questions before we meditate? Because I'm going to set my bell today. And I don't quite know what's wrong with my timer, but it's now doing four interval bells. Maybe I'm going, <laughs> maybe the universe is telling me I'm going into too many trances. What happens when we meditate? I'm going to teach you something about it. We're going to meditate in a second. I want to teach you a little bit about meditation, contemplative prayer, at least what I do called centering prayer. Um, sometimes, we, oh, I had the best meditation. No, you didn't. <laughs> sometimes you think we did. Sometimes our best meditations is when we're the most agitated, quite frankly, I'm going to be honest with you. But we think we did because what we did, we went into a deep thought trance. We went into almost a dreamlike state, and that's not an awake state. Meditation is about being fully awake, being being fully conscious of all of yourself. You, you actually go beyond yourself and be fully awake. But what we do is 
<laughs> particularly, particularly if it's a long time, is for me is I go into I'll be I I I I I get a, a some some thought will come into my radar screen, and I like the thought. It's good. I like the thought, and so I find myself kind of like following the thought deeper and deeper into the thought, and I'm going I'm getting further and further out of meditation and going deeper and deeper into the thought. So the purpose of this interval is to wake us up from that thought and put it so we can go back and float back into meditation and become more awake. So if it irritates you when I the thing goes off and I wake you up, I'm I'm, I'm it's intentional. I'm waking you up from your trance, <laughs> okay? Because I want you to have some really good quality time with yourself, with that divine part of yourself. That's the point. This is this is the ultimate. This is the ultimate act of self love. To take 20 minutes out of your day to make yourself and your and the love for yourself and your other human beings your primary purpose. That's why we're here to make our to make self love and love of others our primary purpose for at least 20 minutes. Okay. So let's get started. So start with raising your hands in the air. Just raise your arms. And begin to understand that that life force that raised your arms is the divine life spark within you. It is so close, so familiar. It is you. It is you. And without it, you could not have raised your hands. If that life force wasn't working within you, I don't care how big your muscles were, you could not raise your arms in the air. So just be still for a second and feel the life force within you, experiencing that electricity in your hands, in your fingers, in your toes, and you can bring them down now, but I just want you to embody the spirit of life for a second, to bring us into the awareness that just as far as we have to go, we don't have to go anywhere. We have everything we need within us. and allow ourselves to breathe. Take a big deep breath into your belly. And let it go. Another big deep breath into your belly. And as you're relaxing and breathing, relax your belly. Love your belly. We in America are so conscious of bellies. Just relax it and love it for exactly the way it is. You got a six pack, love that. If you got a belly, love that. That's the belly you have right now. So just let it go and relax it. You might even expand it to pull the breath more fully into your belly. and become aware of the cyclical nature of your breath. Single focus, mindful breathing. And as you're breathing, you're gonna notice that thoughts are gonna come across your radar screen, across your head. Don't resist them. Just let them go. Ah, oh. Just notice how they'll try to pull you in. The ego is not very intelligent. It's not intelligent at all, but it's very clever. So for those, those spiritual seekers, it might throw in these pious thoughts for us to, to ponder. Don't be tempted. Let it go. Even thoughts of the Divine Mother. Let them go. Be still, thoughtless, the cloud of unknowing. 
deeper, sweeter well than in you. Be still and listen. Listen to the sounds. Listen to the space between sounds. Listen for the space between sounds. Be still and know that I am divine. Allow the bell to wake you up. Reset. Let go and listen.
Okay, welcome back. Welcome back from my little inner journey here. If you like, type in your comments. How was this for you today? How was the educational component today? that help again I really want to encourage you um, to go to the financial mystic sanctuary Facebook group and watch the video I have two webinars there for you uh, practicing the art of being present part a and practicing the art of being present part B uh, your key to living a life of love joy and prosperity and it's amazing that's why I'm giving them to you because it's just I want you to have it I mean I want you to have a life of love, joy, and prosperity, and you it can—it's yours, but you got to do some work. So, take a look. Engage. I won't. I, I'm usually here on Saturdays, but I'm not going to be here tomorrow. I have something. I, I, I I've got an appointment with one of my coaches. Um. <laughs> thank you, Audrey. You're the best. You spotted. You got it. That's what I always say. So I, I, I thank you for saying that, and I reflect the mirror back to you because. You are one of my favorite people on the planet, and I just love you. And I'm so glad you're here today. I'm sorry I can't be here tomorrow. I've got a, I've got I'm got a I've got a meeting with one of my coaches tomorrow from 11 to about two o'clock. So um, he's helping me with some things that was when he can meet with me. So I'm not going to be able to join do this tomorrow. But I'm sure I would encourage you. What you can do tomorrow during this time is grab my webinar from the financial mystic sanctuary and watch it it's a little less than an hour the first one is and the second one's about 30 minutes and so um, uh, take a look at that this weekend and let that be your your power hour on saturday and sunday if you like okay in the meantime may love and prosperity prevail thank you so much for being here I know you made it every day this week. I can see that, and I'm so glad you're here today this weekend. I hope you know. I hope you're feeling a sense of. I hope I really do. Um, it's not just about this, but I, this is a tough time, and we're going through. Um, we are experiencing something that humankind has never experienced before. This is this is big, and if. You, you, we need each other to get through this because it, it, it is a it is a spiritual awakening for the planet. And um, you're welcome, Randy. And uh, thank you for being here too. And um, we are waking up. We are waking up. We are willing to wake up to a higher proof. And we're willing, and we're going to have a lot more fun creating this new world out of love, joy, and prosperity than the old toxic one that was built out of fear, doubt, and scarcity. Yeah, it's just just painful, isn't it? <laughs> so let's get together and let's keep doing it. We're all on a, we're on a roll here and let's keep moving. Let's keep practicing. Be loving each other. May love and prosperity prevail. Thank you.